Okay, so in this video, uh, we are considering a second example for confidence intervals, but now, not for the true population mean, but for the true population standard deviation, therefore for sigma. The problem is the same as before, and now we are asking to construct a 98% confidence interval for the true standard deviation of the weight of the apples, thus for sigma. Let's write down what we know, and you'll see that the idea is the same as before, but in the case of a standard deviation, we have a different statistic. For the case of a mean, if we assumed that we knew sigma, we had the z distribution. If we did not cheat and assume that we only add, had s, the sample deviation, we had a t distribution, and you will see in the case of a standard deviation, so a confidence interval for the standard deviation sigma, we will be using the chi-squared distribution. So what do we know? All we need from this problem to help us build our 95% or 98% confidence interval for sigma is the sample size, and we sampled, if you recall, 80 apples, and our sample standard deviation, which we found to be 0 0.02 kilograms. The only thing that we need now is our statistic. What we'll be using to construct our 98% confidence interval In the case of a standard deviation, if you look at the summary sheet of confidence intervals, it will be the following statistic. It is n minus 1 times the sample deviation squared, so s squared, over the true population standard deviation sigma also squared. And because we have a sample that is bigger than 30, we can use a central limit theorem which will say that this is approximately a chi-square random variable. This letter is called chi, chi-squared, with df, and again df are the degrees of freedom. And just as in the case of the t-distribution, we had n minus 1 degrees of freedom, the same is true of the statistic with the chi-square distribution. It also has, in this case, n minus 1 degrees of freedom, since our sample was of size 80, we get 80 minus 1, therefore 79 degrees of freedom. We are looking for a 98% confidence interval, so our confidence level is 98%, therefore 0 0.98. We are using the chi-square distribution to build our confidence interval, so we have to sketch the chi-square distribution. If you look at the summary sheet of statistics, the chi-square random variable is actually a sum of standard normal random variables squared. So chi-square is a sum of squares, therefore is always not negative. And it's clear from our statistic, s squared can't be negative, same for sigma squared, same for n minus 1, because n is the sample size, and n will therefore always be at least as big as 1. And what will the distribution look like? If you look at the table of the chi-square distribution, you will find it looks something like this. With degrees of freedom, you'll, you'll see when we look at the picture, there are two curves. One when the degrees of freedom are either 1 or 2, and another curve, another overall shape, when we have three or more degrees of freedom. This is our case, and you'll see that the chi-square distribution will look something like this. So this distribution is not symmetric about any point. And that is really the main difference between the t, the z, and the chi-square, is that the chi-square is not symmetric about any given point along its axis but we will proceed as we did before. The confidence level was the area of the central part of our distribution, so we will split this region into three parts. This region, this region, and so 
These will be values of chi-squared. So we'll call this chi-squared max, as it's the greatest one. This will be our larger value of chi-square. This will be the smaller one, so chi-squared min. And now, again, the confidence level is 98%. So the area of this part of the chi-square distribution will be 0 0.98. That leaves, of course, 2% for the remaining tails, the left and the right tail, because we want to build a symmetric confidence interval, we will split them up into two equal, two regions of equal area. So 1% here, 1% here, which will add up to 100%, so 0 0.01. And now the idea is, well, how do we then find two values of chi-square, the minimum and the maximum, so the left and the right endpoint of our interval for chi-squared, well, we use the table of the chi-square distribution. And remember that we have 79 degrees of freedom, and the area to the right of chi-square max is 0 0.01. So here's the chi-square distribution with three or more degrees of freedom. You see the curve looks something like this. And now we want the chi-square. You see the table entries correspond to values of chi-squares. So these are these values, the one that we want. And there are two key elements of finding chi-square. There's the so-called p-value, the area to the right of the chi-square value. In our case, the chi-square max, the area to the right was 1%, so it was 0 0.01, this value right here. But we also need the degrees of freedom, and then we had here 79 degrees of freedom. Again, we don't have 79 on the dot, but we have 70, and we have 80. The closest one to 79 is 80, so we'll take 80. And the second to last column was, if you remember, the column giving us a p-value of 0 0.01, and that was the area to the right. So if we go down now to roughly 80 degrees of freedom, we get a chi-square max of 112.3. So now we have our chi-square max. To find the chi-square min, remember that the table only gives you the area to the right of a given chi-square score. Well, what is the area to the right of chi-square min? Well, the area here is 0.98, the area here is 0 0.01, so the total area to the right of chi-square min is 0.99 with the same degrees of freedom. So once again, we go over to our table for the chi-square distribution. The p-value is 0.99 with approximately 80 degrees of freedom. And the 0.99 was in our second column, and we get a chi-square score of roughly 0.5354. Sorry, not point, but 53.54. And now we're good to go. Right? If you write down what this gives us in terms of the probability 
of the chi-square random variable, we know that the probability that the chi-square random variable lies between our two scores, the x, the chi-square min, and the chi-square max. And here I will replace directly those two by their values. So 53.54 and 112.3. The probability is exactly the area between the two chi-square values, therefore 0 0.98. If you prefer 98%. You say, well, we wanted a confidence interval with 98% confidence, not for the chi-square random variable, but for sigma. Well, let's replace. We are going to replace chi-square by this expression, and then you see we know everything here. We know n, we know s, and we'll isolate for sigma. So let us replace n minus 1, s squared over sigma squared is between 53.54 and 112.3. And we know this will be, we are confident in this with 98% confidence. And now let's isolate for sigma to get our confidence interval for sigma. If you want here, you can replace the values for n and s, or you can replace at the very end. If, if you wish, let's replace now. Since n is 80 and minus 1 is 79, and s was 0 0.02. So we can replace. So we have 53.54 is at most 79 times 0 0.02 squared over a sigma squared at most 112.3. Everything here is positive. The problem is in the end we want sigma to be on top. We want sigma is between two values, but now it's on the bottom. Well, think of it. If I said 2 is at most 3, what if I invert both terms? So 1 half and 1 third. Well, if you notice, 1 half is bigger than 1 third. So when you invert, quantities across an inequality, you also have to invert the direction of the inequality. So let's flip everything here. We'll do 1 over 53.54. This will be inverting the inequality. 1 over this, but 1 over a fraction is the reciprocal of the fraction. We'll get sigma squared over 79 times 0 0.02 squared, which will be, again, inverting the inequality, bigger than 1 over 112.3. This is great, but it's written backwards, so let me just rewrite the inequality, starting with this is less than this, which is less than this, and then we'll be able to isolate for sigma in two short steps, and we'll have our confidence interval. So what did we have? We had uh, 1 over 112.3 was less than or equal to sigma squared, the true population deviation, over 79 times 0 0.02 squared, which in turn was at most 1 over If you want to isolate for sigma squared, multiply across the inequalities by 79, 0 0.02 squared. So you will have 79 times 0 0.02 squared over 112.3, which will be at most. If you multiply this by 79 times 0 0.02 squared, this will cancel this and you will be left with sigma squared, the true population 
variance. Multiplying this by 79 times 0 0.02 squared, you get 79 times 0 0.02 squared over 53.54. Now we have a 98% confidence interval for the true population variance, but we want it for the population standard deviation. Well, the root is an increasing function. If this is less than this, which is less than this, the root of this will be less than the root of this, which is less than the root of this. So take the square root on everything. So you'll have the square root of 79 times 0 0.02 squared over 112.3 is at most, the root of sigma squared is just sigma, which will be at most the square root of 79 times 0 0.02 squared over 53 times uh, 53.54. So the only thing left here is to compute the left and the right end point of our confidence interval. the left hand point you will find approximately 0 0.0168 and this is again in kilograms the right hand point will be approximately now 0 0.0243. So there you have it. We have our conclusion. Roughly 0 0.0168 in kilograms, of course. Right, both of these are in kilograms. At most sigma, at most 0 0.0243 is our, and this was a 98% confidence interval. And think again by why this is again a fantastic conclusion. All we did is we took a sample of 80 apples, we found a sample deviation from those 80 apples only to be of a standard deviation of roughly 0 0.02 kilograms, and now what we're saying is something about the true population standard deviation for the weight of all possible apples going through this factory, and we're saying that we are 90% confident and the interval with the left end point 0 0.0168, right end point 0 0.0243 will contain the true population standard deviation for the weight of all apples. We could be wrong. There is a 2% chance that our interval from this point to this point does not contain sigma but those are odds are pretty slim because we are 98% confident that the interval from here to here does contain our true population standard deviation. And this is how you do a confidence interval for sigma.